There are two ways you can get an interior as amazing as this. The first is to spend £81,000 and get an S-Class that won't go in any car parks. The second is to spend half as much and get one of these that will. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Change my lights to blue. Okay, I'm changing the colour. I mean, there's nothing in this cabin that I don't like. It's better than my house in here. Direct me to the nearest gas station. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? Yes, it's the new Mercedes C-Class. More headroom, elbow room, bigger boot, better suspension, and understanding your every word makes it the most advanced saloon in the world. Are you the most advanced saloon car in the world? Unfortunately, the central locking system cannot be operated via voice. All right, maybe not, but look at this. It even has a fingerprint reader, for goodness sake. Mind-blowing navigation, there's menus everywhere, and it turns into a disco at night. This is the most impressive car I have done for years. However, that does bring me on to some honesty, and that would be the seats, because although the S-Class has the best seats in any form of moving device in the world, these are a little more snug, which is a polite way of saying they really are quite small. The steering wheel, on the other hand, is brilliant. I mean, it is just a lovely thing. This steering is very light. I'm going to just do a little turn around so you can see. Uh, the cameras and everything. Incidentally, the cameras, you get a little crumple zone down here and you can actually crash into things. Unlike the Skoda, when you, when you go to crash into something in the Skoda and if you ignore the beeps, it will stop. My BMW does that, this doesn't. So watch your paint. And the cameras are good though, right? Just, I think every year they try and make this steering wheel bigger and more luxurious. I can barely get my little child hands around it now, which is good. Look, look at these, like an otter. <laughs> From the Burmester sound system, which you really need to hear, to the array of different technology you can utilize in this car, it's almost as if Mercedes have thrown absolutely everything at it. And when the world is saying, get an electric car because they're cool and brilliant, Mercedes are saying, nah. Get a C-Class, mate. A diesel one. The C-Class bathes you in luxury and craftsmanship. The result is lots of dopamine. It's a bit like having a balanced diet and doing yoga every day, but it's a car. And this is the sound of it. Which actually is not bad at all. Nine gears, 261 horsepower. And actually, when I put this down, I think it's pretty hushed. And because it's got mild hybrid as well, when you pull up to traffic lights or when you pull into a stop, it switches the engine off, so you won't hear it at all. Four-cylinder, two-litre unit. Four cylinders disappointing, but you'll be surprised with the, you know, the, the mild hybrid, how this is. My question is, this is notorious for Mercedes, how will this sound after 50,000 miles? Maybe because I get the cars last after everyone else, you'll already have had one. So you can perhaps let me know in the comments. The 48 volt mild hybrid system enables the car to stop the engine as you slow down. That makes a massive difference on the move, quieter and obviously very good for economy. Oh, that means I get to ask yet another question. How can I help? What's my miles to the gallon? Your average consumption since the start of the journey is 12.2 megal and since the last reset, 35.8 megal. As well as impressive megal, when you're bored, you can even play a general knowledge game with the car. Welcome to GeoQuiz. Baghdad is the capital of which country? Iraq. Tough luck, you're wrong again. Right. The right answer is Iraq. Okay, it's not perfect, but the technology inside this car is so comprehensive at first, you might find it a little bit overwhelming. That's all right, mate. Just cycle through the shop. Okay, overwhelming test here in the Mercedes C-Class. Let's have a look and see how overwhelming it is and how mind-blowing it is. Right, so we're going to do a little auto cruise test just to show you. Right, so we will go car all settings we've got collision avoidance assistance active distance assist we'll put that on based on keep that in auto 
steering assist, yes, it doesn't steer. It just gives you a knock, which I like. Lane change, fine. Right, okay, let's put a destination in and let's go. This is a roundabout. I'm in auto cruise. It's slowed down for the roundabout. I'm indicating right. I'm going round the roundabout without my feet, look. It's done the corner and now it's going to speed up again. Right? So you can use auto cruise on roundabouts. I've now got a little mini roundabout and a right hand turn. Will it know this? It's slowing down not very well. I had to use the brakes. Okay, I'm going to go right. So there's a number of things that makes this overall. That's impressive anyway, right? But there's a number of things that makes this really overwhelming. First, the head-up display, which is wide. It's got everything on it. In fact, the amount of time it takes your eyes to read what's going on on the head-up display, well, <laughs> it's hard, but also very impressive. It won't do the track numbers or the track names like you get with a BMW. And then you've got this screen down here, which is showing you the camera modes, the graphical mode and the arrows. So you're not quite sure what to look at. And then when you're done with that, you've got this binnacle down here and this woman shouting at you the whole time. My question to you is augmented. Look, now the, now the radio's come on. Oh, the Mercedes C-Class also is very useful because there is a little icon of a beer glass. I want beer now. Immediately give me beer. And then when you press the beer icon, it says, let's go. And it tells you what the name of the pub is and where it is. Now, at this point, I would normally tell you how much a C300D is on leasing.com, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm now gonna show you a C200. This is what's interesting. So this is how much they are which is significantly more than both the A4, which is almost half the price to lease. Same for the BMW 3 Series, not half, but significantly cheaper. And that is interesting. It may well be the most advanced C-Class ever and possibly the most overwhelmingly brilliant saloon car in the world but it's also very expensive. But that could be just right now, when all cars are more expensive than a four-bedroom house. In time, if prices change, there won't be anything on the road in saloon form that will touch this for a very long time. Right, country road bit, which is unusual because we're in a C-Class. What I love, first of all, about the handling in this sort of environment is the lack of air suspension. I think with the estate version there will be air suspension at the back if, if there's ever any chips in the world anymore. At the moment these are normal springs, I really like them and as you can hear from this at 40-50 miles an hour there isn't really any road noise. I know I'm in a car but compared to the last one I mean that's worth what 50 quid a month to have no road noise? I like that. Cornering is really good and really flat and I'd almost go as far as to say it's slightly firm it's not it doesn't crash over bumps but it is slightly firm so again this is the AMG line so obviously you're gonna get a lovely more cosseted setup on a, on a, a more basic one which I think probably I might go for I think this is going back to that Mercedes values it does seem that in the past they were trying to be the same as everybody else just to grab a little percentage of market share but now Mercedes are going do you know what sod it let's just do what we do let's just do the best or nothing in fact that could be a strap line and they could have it there are some things I don't like number one when you want to turn the aircon on and off you have to tap this button down here two three four five right now it's on five six seven seconds before it comes on right not good enough brevity in this world tension economy this is that's no good then you've got to turn it off which takes the same amount of time three two one now it's gone off next thing is down here the volume when you set your navigation it's very difficult if you don't want the woman to talk, she will keep interrupting you unless you press the specific right button. And there's only one button in order to switch her off and it's taken me two days to find it. What else? I'm going to be honest, I think that the steering wheel here is beautiful. It's amazing to look at, 
but I probably, well I've found myself not using all these buttons. Occasionally I will use them to change the binnacle and so on and to switch on the cruise and that, but I don't know. Back to the review. It's now night time. By far, this car's most impressive experience. LED everywhere might be distracting to you, but brilliant for all of your friends asking you to change the colors with your voice, and that'll never get boring. Then there's this head-up display, which unlike other cars can be customized as you go along. In this mode, I've chosen the sport displays, and on the binnacle here are the different views you can choose. Impressive, right? There's even a nice view on the center screen when you're using Spotify. I think these wheels are worth a mention too. You've got a secondary design in here. Do you like this or would you prefer less spokes? I think it's a very, very unique design. These are quieter tires than the last C-Class as well. Round of applause for that. Well done Mercedes. It's no longer a noisy car like the last one. These are obviously diamond cut and there is a discussion here for the comments about diamond cut wheels because apparently it's a known thing that diamond cut wheels when they are being repaired only last for a certain period, which defeats the object of having diamond cut wheels if they can't be repaired. I've got some, they've lasted about eight months after repair and I can see there's cracks in the lacquer and, or whatever it is they put on them. So what are your thoughts on that? If you have one of the older C-Class models, you could argue your car looks a little bit better than the new one. This new C looks a bit too much like an A-Class for some, and it's a bit low to get in and out of for me. But in terms of the quality, you'll be taking an enormous step up. And that brings me on to our top three. Number one then is the price. Believe it or not, there is some good about something being expensive. It's as if they're no longer going head to head with BMW. I, I know that they probably are, but it's as if they're saying, right, barrier of entry is now much higher. You can't get into one of these unless you're prepared to spend the money. That makes it a little bit more exclusive. Number two is longevity, because if you are spending a lot of money on something, you don't want to get bored of it quick. This is something that will take you, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, it's going to take you six months minimum to learn everything so that it becomes second nature. Okay, so longevity, oh, and customizability. Oh, and these seats with the twin, the twin colour. Finally, number three, the nighttime experience. Different car at night. It looks luxurious. The head-up display is mind-blowing at night. So is the screen, so is the binnacle, and then the Burmester sound system at night. Best experience in the world. Just amazing.